Resumed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this great game that is called Starbow that deceptively look a lot like StarCraft 2. And with me today I have Kalevi, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, you're not awesome? I'm just, I'm just always fine. awesome. Of course. Kalevi actually is a policeman officer. Um like um like they would say in Hot Fast. So he he arrests nerds and bad people. Mostly bad I, I, except when they play stubble and then let them go. But. Of course. <laughs> I can see you like bust down someone's house and you look at their computer and they're playing stuff like, oh, 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 you're a star. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. No, I'll let you go. Just give him, you know, give him something from the impound or something, you know. Like, okay, here's a little bit of marijuana. There you go. Okay, so in the top right corner, <laughs> without further ado, playing as the Red Protoss player, it is Teddy Bear. And on the bottom left side, we have one of my favorite Terran players. Scafism. Scafism is a pretty. Why is Scafism your favorite turn player? He's one of my favorite turn player. My favorite turn, turn player is of course Dirty Back because he's just awesome. Um, and Scafism, Scafism is one of the um, turn players I really would like to beat, but I never really achieved that. So, <laughs> so he's one of my favorite yeah. turn players. Easy. Dirty Back, you say. No, not Dirty Bag. Dirty Bag is my favorite, but oh, Skate just... is one of my favorites. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry I spaced a little bit. Someone tried to tell me something on Skype, so I had to respond, of course. And, and Teddy Bear is one of my um, favorite Protoss players. Uh. <laughs> just want to point it out there. Yeah, He's one of the... Uh, um, I would say one of the uh, most skilled in terms of um, yeah, what we have on the ladder right now. He's really good at... Whoa, that bug is still happening. We need to do something about that. But... Um, I really enjoy Teddy Bear's um, mindset in Starbow because he's always he's always about you know finding new things. Yeah, new things, new strategies. Okay, so this game was actually played. I think it's the latest patch, but it was before the the bug fix patch. You don't see the you don't see the Caldera and Citadel constructing. Ah, yes. But it is completing before, like in a nice way. Uh, like so, in terms of balance, it doesn't really. Mean no. anything because the only thing is like well, a snare doesn't decloak units and stuff like that. But yeah, that's PVT, that's actually so. quite huge in the PVT. <laughs> yeah, especially in PVT. So we're gonna have a wow factory before CC. It's not so common anymore, I feel. But Scafism hasn't played for a while, so he's kind of coming back into this. And then that it's normal that you see them use a little bit, you know, older strategies. And they're not bad. They're just like not in the current meta. If we even have a meta. Um, I I haven't played for a while either, so I'm not. I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Well, I just I just <laughs> see more like just just CC on high ground, uh, even before barracks versus Protoss, or just barracks into CC and then into factory. Just more greedy play, basically, in general from Terrans because they can get ah. away with it. And this is not very greedy at all. This is more like a one base push into expand into expanding. He's going for the yeah. He's gonna push with one factory and one on barracks here. He's gonna make one siege tank and then he's gonna follow up with vultures because he's getting the spider mines and he's gonna try and perhaps deny the natural base from Teddy Bear. I think that's the purpose of this. Um, I don't that's see good. him expanding. Like if you want to expand, you go for siege mode and not keep making marines. I might be completely wrong though. Uh oh. So I think you should move up. By the way. What? Right now. Escapism should move out. Like the the vultures are really fast for reinforcing. He's getting a big army. He should just go. And he's just chilling. Okay, there we go. Now he's moving out. Teddy but bear is actually um going for reavers, I believe, from one base. No, no just observer. really early observers. No, huh. no base behind this. That's actually quite surprising. I, he didn't see that there was no m natural base, but he sees the push coming out, so he can assume that natural is is e even either uh, okay. not going to be there or very late. But he's going no, to greet, greet. What the Teddy push. Bear is going to do is now secure as much terrain as possible. He wants yeah. to have as much slow down this push as much as possible. Not it's really engage this head on. The, it, it's it's a good thing to do, but he should have done a little bit earlier. Uh, he should have been meeting meeting Scafism even earlier. But that's always something important to remember when you play versus mech. You, you never want to be in a situation where you just walk across the map without being confronted by anything. And he actually... Okay, now the Observer is a really good idea, actually. Yeah, yeah, it was a good frame <laughs> to have. And the fact that he hasn't expanded... Oh, now it's getting the War Prism, that's also very nice uh, to deal with this. Now, actually, 
Scafism just hit him back again. He sees oh, this is kind of interesting. I think Scafism wanted to kill a natural base. He sees that it's not there, and then he can deduce that Teddy Bear actually has quite a bit of units, and he doesn't want to commit. And then I can just take yeah, and then he can just take a base. I think this is perfectly response from it's, Scafism it's, actually. It's actually one of these pushers, um, which a lot of time players do in Starbo instead of the two facts factory build that is designed to kill the natural mm -hmm. Protoss player. Um, so this is kind of an alternative to, to that just because um, Marines are a little bit better so and produce a little bit faster than other factories than factory units. Um, so when he sees when you do two facts build or this kind of build you you expect to see natural and if there's no natural you have to push push back. Yeah. Also very interesting from Teddy Bear is actually double expanding after this push happened. Or kind of, it wasn't really a push, he just pulled back in. But he does this without any information about the natural, just assuming that Scafism went back to expand. So that's a little bit of a bullsey, but yet very logical play from Teddy Bear. Like, this would be hard countered if, if Scafism just built up another round and just went for it again, and then Teddy Bear would probably just be dead. But but that's so rare. Well, he could cancel the Nexus one yeah. as soon as this Observer comes in. I mean, it's pretty safe to assume that uh, a play of Scafism's cousin. Caliber would do the most logical thing after such a push. You know what just happened? Uh, this hasn't happened in a long time. We just got a subscriber. That's it's oh, been a while. What? Trigo and I subscribed. He gets the CFS clap of approval. Uh, that's about all you get, except for a couple of emotes for now. Uh, but if we get enough subscribers, we could we could have some more fun stuff for subscribers later on. But thanks a lot, Trigo and I. All the money we make from subscribing on this channel, or just the uh, ads we get for the YouTube channel I have, will go to Starbo tournaments. So we do appreciate that. So we see two more factories out of Scafism. Nice. And he hasn't claimed his natural gas yet, which I think he should do just now. Um. If, you, if you have two bases as a turn player, and you're not planning to take a third too soon, and you do want to you want to push with two bases. Do you want two, four or five factories? Um, I usually go for four factories, four or five factories. But that's because my macro is just bad. So. No, but I think you can. I, I think you can. You can you can produce out of five factories if you want to do a push. Yeah, even with perfect macro, I think at least four. Uh, like he's going yeah. for three now, and and that's also completely normal because a lot of times you don't want to push off two base, you just want to go for a third base, and then three factories are just fine for a little bit, uh, and then you add two or three more after the th after the third base is secure, um, or while you're securing the third base. But um, huh? <laughs> he wants a math lesson. Oh, to go now? Sure, we can do a math lesson. That's actually, I, you know what? I can do that. I can say a free math lesson to anyone who subscribes. <laughs> Isn't that the best incentive ever to subscribe to this channel? Totally. Totally. I can I, I can teach you about the complete principle of real numbers. Yay! No, you know, Destiny or, or other people, they do, they do coaching and stuff, but that's just boring. Who doesn't want to do math? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Coaching, you know, you don't need to... Like, I couldn't coach Starbo anyway. I'm not that good. Um, oh wow! Okay, kills Scape probes, like kills cultures. probes with a single vulture. Really nice, really nice control. Actually, the vulture. I think with the latest patch, the vulture became slightly more difficult to control uh, because of what we did to the mutalisk. It's kind of weird, but it is. It's strangely related uh, because the mutalisk control and the vulture control has the same share some some stuff. Um, anyhow. Scafism moving out with a lot of vultures. Uh, he's going to try yet again. Uh, I like this though. He's just placing mines everywhere. He wants to have that map vision and control. Look at him. He's, he's look at that vision from Scafism. He sees everything. He's like the eye of Mordor, although <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> and that's enough vultures to just straight up kill cannons. No, no, it's not enough vultures. You, you, there's never might, enough vultures. Might have killed what? one, but I think it's better to go for for the probes. This went completely different than I expected. Oh, there's one. There's one hole in the defense. Wow! Like he barely scratched these cannons. I was I was sure they were gonna like. No, no, no! Cannons are beefy. Yeah, they are beefy. Cannons are real beefy. Yeah. Actually, shields go down really, really fast, but the actual cannon not. Um. Yeah. They do 20 damage. I think shield. I think he might if he had focus fight he might have gotten one. 
before the army arrives and that would have been a waste. It was definitely the correct decision to go after the probes. So we're gonna have Scafism is gonna take this third base now. Nice. He already has probes an Oh. Yeah, that's quite nice actually. Teddy Bear is ahead in supply though. Another thing I really admire about Teddy Bear is the fact that when he started playing Star Bowl, he wasn't really that good, to be honest. He was, he was like C, low, low C level, high D level. And he's just worked his way up, and he's he's one of the. I think he's B now even. Uh, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's he's totally B. Yeah, yeah. So he's doing really well. Hey, Dark Slayer. Um. So the so third base of Scaphism comes a little bit late, but that's okay because um, Teddy Bear hasn't really uh, started his war yet. But he's looking into stunning it now. We see a probe heading out. Yeah, uh, this mine just... is actually not going to deny anything. But he's going to spot it at least. Oh, this vultures might! <laughs> this no. vultures might! Oh, that you clutch! Yes. Nobody gets the probe. Yes, so. focus fire, focus fire! It's a blow pilot. Do it, do it, do it! <laughs> Kalev is getting desperate. Do it! No, kill it off! Kill it off! Oh, he got it, and then it hits out. <laughs> that's that's all right. Oh, wow. oh you just. Suddenly became silent. I think it was just the music suddenly became loud. Like we just had a, a climax in the music. Oh, this is. Isn't this Brood War music? Is this because I, I have this overlay? I thought when I was observing games, I can only play StarCraft 2 music. No, no, it's, it's both, I believe. But you can't Oh, it's like a combination. Yeah, yeah, but you can't choose only Brood War, only StarCraft 2. No, you can't when you're observing, I think. But you yeah. can choose it, but it doesn't respect your choices. It's kind of like a forced marriage. It's... Yeah. <laughs> Somehow. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, these vultures are not doing that much damage anymore. But these vultures, again, on the quest to break down pylons. But oh wow, enforcing with two gateways. So we see uh, Teddy is like a uh, late game choice of uh, attack. Well, we. Oh already... what? That's not tight. He just snuck through there. Go in there. Go out again. Very interestingly, uh, Scafism is researching enhanced gravity lifters, so he's gonna start picking off siege siege tanks. Yeah, we have seen a little bit of um, usage in the early game of this. Um, in the early stage of Star Wars, we've seen a lot of usage out of this upgrade, especially from Hydra, which were migrating, <laughs> which was migrating siege tanks in, in huge battle. Yeah, it's pretty cool actually. But uh, it has gotten a little bit. Um, like, people don't do it as often anymore, but I think it's still a useful upgrade to have. Mm -hmm. It's always nice when you have it. Okay, he's checking out how many, how many dragons there are, and he's... So, one thing about Teddy Bear is that I really don't, um... I, I, I really think Skiffism has, has too few vultures, but one thing I, I... I don't see out of Teddy Bear, what I see more often is more War Prism usage. Yeah. He doesn't. You, he's not favoring the war prison, but he has. He's getting two arbiters on the way. He's getting stasis and warp gate. So he's he's building up the late game really well. Scafism is a really nice position there to attack this base actually, and he's been able to push across the map like that without being contended. Uh -oh. Teddy Bear coming in with the dragoons first and the zealots later, and it's really bad at engagement for Teddy Bear. I feel he's got one high tempo. I think he has storm, uh, but it's just kind of okay. Very nice storm. That was actually an excellent storm. In the meantime, there's a tank drop at the bottom that isn't really to accomplish anything. Oh, he killed a worker, I think. 28 workers total when killed by Skafism. Well, he can he can actually, yeah, he can put the tank on the low ground. He can start to, uh, to elevate up some, some vultures if he wants to. Nah, this is straight up, this is evolving into a straight up push at this phase. Really good play from Skafism. But like, sure, he lost all those units, but he's attacking two positions at the same time, both of the important expansions for Teddy Bear, and Teddy Bear can't deal with all this at the same time. He's breaking, bringing down the wall, he should bring in the vultures now to pick up some of these, well there's only three probes actually. The wall is down. Man, Siege Tank's firing, so, so beefy, bam bam bam. I just love it. So More Siege Tanks, but there are no Orbiters in place, and they have I want to say force field because my hotkey is F, but they have they have stasis field ready. Stasis field level one still not fixed in this patch. No, it, it's fixed in the next one. 
I hope it still works with blind. I haven't tested that because that's why the level room is there. Really good stasis. Really oh, he's sieging up the tanks in the stasis because yeah, that's a bug. Another stasis and storm a little bit of overkill there. Yeah, you can't storm stasis, so you kind of save them from the storm. But yeah, Teddy Bear cleaning this up as well. Um, I still say that Skiffism has done damage, and he's, you know, he's he's staying safe. <gasps> oh, he might get it pro transfer. Gets it pro transfer. No, he doesn't. Oh, uh, not too much. But he gets a few. <coughs> still struggling with throat cancer over here. So yeah, okay. Skafism keeps losing units, but he stays ahead in macro, and he has a really big army. Okay, that's not that big. Where's the rest of them? Okay, there's a couple there. But he's almost maxed. Yeah, Good also, he's, he's pretty much ahead in upgrades. We have plus three uh, finishing now for uh, ta uh, for Teddy Bear, and Skafism is close to getting plus two armor upgrade. Is starting on plus three weapon right now. Yeah, this is a very even game so far. Um, it's really hard to say who's. I think I think I'll give the edge to Skafism just because, uh, just because uh, Teddy Bear hasn't been able to touch Skafisms. Oh, only Zealots versus Vultures, and that's always a bad. Yeah, look at that. Just to be careful not to get stomped. Oh, he was oh he was move command, so he didn't really do anything there. Yeah, Storm is going to be a lot better versus Vultures if we go for the. No, he has to lay down mines. There are 27 mines which are not on the field right now. It should be on the field. True. And he's just gonna scan attack in this very nice stasis. And yeah, Teddy Bear should be able to clean this one up yet again. Oh wow, but still no storm. No storm sni Templars getting sniped. Um, this was a very weird engagement where yeah. both of the players were really lacking a lot of army control. It was a l quite sloppy, especially from Scafism with no mines. And, but in the oh, meantime, but we he's see tank drop. Very nice. Yeah, Teddy Bear cleaning up those things. Even storming the science vessel. He, he wants to oh, he could, he could li lift up the siege tanks. Lift up the siege tanks! Why do you have this upgrade if you don't lift them up? Oh, there we go. go. Oh, but he <laughs> loses the dropship. Oh, uh, yeah, this this has been... It, it's good, but a fairly sloppy game. But meanwhile, look at that. Skafism has an expansion up with absolutely no defenses. And Teddy Bear isn't touching it. He doesn't even know about it, I suppose. Or else he would have done something about it. Uh, so that's very unfortunate. Teddy Bear has just been defending and defending this whole game long, and Skafism is just putting on the pressure. Although he's not necessarily having the best attacks, he's making sure that he's just staying on the aggressive, and, and he doesn't really have to invest much in defense. Skafism knows that um, that this six o'clock phase is pretty risky. Yeah. Um, and I'm really surprised that he did not. He had so many vultures that just died that did not lay down mines. Um, and I'm re that's, I think that's sad. I nearly cry oh, when I see it. Teddy Bear is actually going to try and go for this base that he, he doesn't actually know about this one either, but he should. Teddy Bear actually hasn't seen any of the expansions to his opponent. No, only his natural. Uh, he should assume 111 at least. Uh, Skafism is going to push through this wall. <laughs> actually, oh. killing a lot of his own vultures there. Be careful. They don't mind small mines, please. <laughs> He's putting down a little bit of mines. Still 19. 90 mines. Here we go, Teddy Bear's gonna tag into this, and he, at least his elves are in the front. Oh, Zealot's seeding huge mine shots. One very nice this is on the back there, though. I don't know if Teddy Bear can break this, but I think he I'll can. I'll just okay. go down. Oh, I have to zoom out a little bit. No, yeah. I, think, I think he will not be. He's going to be able to clean out, out the tanks that are still alive, but I mean, which are not stasis, but I don't think he can clean up what's left after that. Very interesting engagement there, to say the least. Uh, Although, oh, and here comes a little bit of reinforcements. Really nice storm. Really oh, nice. yeah, that was a good storm. Oh, but they're now on stasis on the low ground. He needs to get a good storm off of them. Meanwhile, Teddy Bear is expanding. Um, yeah, which is the correct decision. And yeah. no more siege tanks. Yeah, this base is going to go down. I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah right. Could do some dropship micro, and I think he is. Keeping a dropship moving, that's very nice to have the acceleration if needed. Yeah, everything going down now for Teddy Bear. I think Scapism is in a dominant lead at this point. Oh, um, he even takes some middle base. He's not afraid to show it. Hey, I've got this game. 
<laughs> it's such a BM base to take. It's like I won this. Get out of this game. I got. If I can defend this base, I can defend any base, pretty much. There is more arbiters. There's more potential stasis. I'm so glad he did not stasis that siege tank. That would have been a waste of 100 energy or 100. Oh, a huge probe transfer this space uh, on the top left of Teddy Bear wow. is heavily oversaturated. 35. Well, he's, they got it to harvest somewhere. There's 16 here, so there he's, he's, he's free. Oh, well wow, look at the factories of Scapism. Very well, very well placed. And there's a lot Yeah, even, 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 even the macro, they were like overcharged every single one now. Scapism has the pro style, that's for sure. And now yep. he's finally defending this bottom base. Wow, the dish on the orbital command looks so cool with the strong colors. Teddy Bear tried to go for a recall there, but it did not work. Oh, oh, he got shut down. That's Sorry, scared. Yeah, yeah. He could try and recall on top here, maybe. To, yeah, no, 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 no. I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> yeah, like if if he doesn't, if, if that doesn't work, he's pretty much dead. He can just yeah, yeah. counterattacking from that would just be so strong. But he's actually retaking this base. Uh, he's gotten away with this other base that Scafism doesn't know. They've both been doing somewhat little to to check for expansions for the other player. That Warp Arbiter is just snooping around trying to find somewhere. He do, he does not want to recall on that on that uh, three o'clock nine o'clock position just because it's almost mined out anyway and there's so much defenses there. That's not the base. Like he wants to take the six o'clock or the middle base at this point. That's the uh, even even the six I, I think he could swing in there at some angle, but he has to find it. That's a difficult part about I thought the, I think those Goliaths were out to try and snipe the Arbiter actually. Very nice play from Scafism there. Yeah, he scanned, saw the Arbiter and moved down. Mm -hmm. Moved down a few. Goliaths in position. So the game is stabilizing a little bit because Scafism doesn't really need to like... He's in such a dominant lead right now that he... He can very slowly push now. He doesn't have to like rush into anything. Um, and he has that middle base. And but he's actually setting up a really nice position there. He needs more mines like you said though. He's got the siege tank count to make up for it. Oh wow, no, Scapism has got a very strong position on this map. And okay, we got Teddy Bear he... trying to move in here. Oh, the zealots! Oh, That's yeah, horrible. This is a slaughter. Oh, nice stasis though, but still. No, it's not enough. Yeah. There's no way he can deal with this, I think. This is a disaster from Teddy Bear at this point. I don't think he can come back from this after losing. Uh, such a big chunk of his army. Yeah, look at that. More than double the supply now at the point. At this point, uh, Teddy Bear. Yeah, if you look at the income too. The income is. Oh, it's only slightly favoring Scapism actually at this point. But he has the arm. He has the position. Uh, and actually, Teddy Bear wants to be ahead in, in income. Oh no! Teddy Bear switching into stock cars. That's what. Yeah, that's not a good idea. This much, I would think. Oh, the Templar train! Take my Templars! <laughs> yeah, take them! Take them all! <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he could find now a window because uh, science was less stasis. No attack! Attack! Not oh, scan oh. your stone. No. Yeah. And the science was is no longer stasis. So yeah, no, I think perhaps, this is it. perhaps the Zealot Warp in now would clean this up. Yeah, true. Does he have Warp Kids? No, he has only his Yeah, yes. He he, no, he had Warp in there. He warped in this uh, early. Oh, okay. Well, he, he changed them to, to Gateways again. I can't see, find any Warp Kids anymore. Yeah, and they are still on cooldown even when they. That's actually pretty interesting. If you warp back into Gateways, um, the cooldown of the Warp Kid is still there. So if you transform back again, you would have to. Yeah. GG. Wait.